Howdy everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at some more tips for you guys to kind of make your life a little bit easier and see if we can't help you out a little bit. Let's get right into it. So our first tip for the day is going to have to do with base building. Not anything in particular, but more of underground base building. Whether it's in the side of a mountain, in the side of a hill, or even in the flats that just goes down. Everybody gets to the point where they want to try it and they want to do it. And you start digging and you get your hole going and everything else. And what most people will do is they'll dig out a little bit, place some blocks, see that they've gone down in the ground a little too far, and then keep going that way. It works. It's a slow process, but it works. One thing we can do is kind of preemptively make this uh, pathway to kind of keep us in a straight line. And I'll show you how to do that. So to go ahead and start this off, all we are going to do is just make sure that our block is on gravity, gravity align placement. And we're just going to come out in the middle of nowhere and we're just going to start placing it. Now I'll usually try to keep only one in the ground or at the very end just so it can be the one that attaches to the base and make sure everything's lined up and then i'm just gonna go a couple out just to make sure that part stays level and then after that you just sketch out the room that you want to make Alright, so, oh, I have it all sketched out, now I don't know exactly what this room's going to be, but it's going to be a room. What I'm going to do is come to the back end here, and you've noticed I've not welded any of it. I'm going to come to the back end and just take a blueprint of it. You can rename it whatever, it can be... We'll just make it a garage. And then we go in, we check this little box, make sure we have it. Once we do, we can go ahead and get all our steel plate back. Now you don't have to grind all of this away in case you want to use it as kind of a reference point for the next room but what we're gonna do is put down a projector and you want to make sure you have the two lines facing forward or wherever you want your thing to be and then your four lines up top next we're gonna put a button on the back go into our projector Go to blueprints and then select our garage. I'm gonna hit keep projection. That way it stays. And then we are just gonna push it forward. Uh looks like we gotta go this way some. Probably like that. And come down a little bit. That might work. See what that looks like. Yeah, there you go. But what this is going to allow you to do is if we take out our drill, we can see this projection even in the ground. So we can actually just take our drill and follow that projection as we dig. And that's going to help us keep a straighter line, not dig away too much, not waste our time. And it will ensure we have the clearance that we need for whatever we're trying to build. Alright. 
So say you got yourself a little welding ship, you're going along. You're just building everything up. Might take a little while, and it's probably actually slower than normal welding, but it'll get the job. The only reason I bring up the ship is because once you get everything welded up, you might be looking to actually place more blocks down. And the way you're probably going to do that is by coming in here, placing down the grids, and doing it that way. Which works perfectly fine. But did you know you can do it while in a cockpit? Now, the cockpit either has to be connected to the cargo system. So you can see I have a medium cargo with the large port facing forward. I have a junction here with the large ports going uh, vertical. And then the welder connected to one of the large ports of the converter or the junction. The cockpit sits on the other large port that way if I need to uh where am I I can put stuff into the cockpit and put that into the medium cargo and vice versa I can go wherever I want with them that's the plan or as long as I have the plates on me what you can do while you are in your ship's cockpit here. Go into first person and press control G. Now we have a block we can place. Pretty cool, huh? It's the same as going like this. There you go. Just gotta make sure you have it on your hotbar down there. And to do that, you can literally just press G like you're going into the menu. Or you can press Control G again. And you can end up welding it up. If you have more plate. I think I ran out. <laughs> um, yep, I have the 20 on me. So let's go ahead put that into the medium cargo make sure we have our welder selected and we can weld up and I ran out of plate so yeah you can use your ship to actually place blocks and weld them up I think it's nice I need more ice so our next tip is going to be about conveyors. When it comes to putting in conveyors throughout your base, try to use as little of the junctions as possible. Especially if you're running on consoles or on a low end system. The way Space Engineers works is it takes all of these port entries and calculates them every tick of where they're able to go. So the less ports you have that are available, the less it's gonna try and lag your system because the less calculations it's trying to do. If you look, let's hop into Spectator here, going into my garage. I ran straight ports, straight conveyors all the way, did the 90s, and I could probably put a junction here in the floor if I wanted to seal it, make sure we have air tightness in the future. But I'm not too worried about that here on the Earth like. So I'm just running regular conveyors all the way down and over to where I pop up through the floor. And that will help with lag by giving the game less calculations to. Speaking of conveyors, this leads into our next thing. I know earlier I mentioned rovers, and that seems to be the more complicated thing to build in SC because one, they can't fly, so you're looking more towards weight, 
weight distribution and everything else. But the other common issue is the conveyors on any ship, really. When it comes to conveyors on small grid ships especially, you have to think about what that ship is going to be used for. If it is going to be used for hauling ores, like ice, or something like that, like on a miner, the way they are piped isn't too important. Because if you have large ports going in every direction, it works just fine. If you have small ports, like on this right here, ores will still go through that. Even some smaller components like steel plate, interior plate, those will go through the small conveyor ports. When you get up into like welding ships or cargo uh, vessels like this rover or a cargo hauler, that's when you need to start paying attention to large port versus small port. So if we look, if I go ahead and connect that cargo with just small grid tubes, I'm going to go ahead and name this the test cargo. Go back to the inventory. I put in some construction components in the large cargo container um, that's in the rover. If I try to take these and move them into the cargo container test, they work. Now, if I were to try that with something a little bigger, say detector components, and I do the same thing, here's our cargo container test, it's not going to go in there because it can't go through small ports. We would need to connect it somehow with large ports going all the way to it. So that's something to keep in mind with conveyors on small grid vehicles. So another thing with rovers in particular. The other part that makes them a little more difficult is the connectors. Unless you actually plan for it and build to it, what you end up with normally is some weird connector heights that just don't line up. At least I do. And you can see I have the offset all the way down, I have the strength all the way down, and I'm still in the middle. Even if I were to go into the rover, go to my wheels, do my height offset all the way, and then my strength back up where I like to have it, I'm still not sitting at a very good height for it. One thing you can do, and that not a lot of people like doing because it can be a little bit intimidating, is if we go into here and we just grab a couple hinges. And that's all we're going to use. You can go from the bottom, you can go from the top really doesn't so if we just put a couple hinges on here I'm gonna make sure both of them have their negatives facing downward have myself a button kind of like that and then if I go in I can still see those here I'm just gonna bring this one's velocity down a little bit Bring this one's velocity up a little bit. And that looks pretty freaking close. So if we just move the rover up. Make sure it's parked so it doesn't run off somewhere. Try to disobey me. And then we back up. We can see we have a lock. And we can lock to the base. Cool. Don't be afraid to use hinges, even pistons, to try to get a connection. It will save you time. It will save you a headache. So my next tip 
I forget what number we're on, so I'm just going to keep saying next one, <laughs> is again with the rovers. Today's pretty much going to be conveyors and rovers and building, stuff like that. But the when it comes to rovers and their wheels, one thing I try to always do is have the offset as high as it'll go, which ironically is as low as it goes on here. If we watch the rover back here, the height offset, it'll go down as the number goes up. Basically what you're doing is you are adjusting the, no, well, lost the cursor. If you look at the wheels right here, the actual axle that the wheel is riding on, that's what you're adjusting. The negative is the halfway point of the suspension. So as you go down, the suspension will technically go up or the wheel, its axle will go down. And that's what we're adjusting. The other thing I will do with it is do not crank the strength all the way up. It is gonna be stiff and you're not gonna be doing a whole hell of a lot with that. So you see, as I go over the little hill, my right suspension is actually in the air. And that's because I have these two stiff. What ends up happening is now I've lost grip. So what we can do is go back to our wheels and bring that strength down. And normally it's not gonna be too high. Six or seven will usually work out pretty well. Power, you can adjust as you need it. I usually keep it around 60%. Friction, I usually keep at 100. Speed limit, I like to restrict myself to about 100, but I usually don't go more than like 30 or 40. Um, and that's on very flat terrain. So now, all wheels are pretty much touching. That one in the front's probably still a little bit off the ground. But I have a lot more flexibility with those wheels to be able to keep that friction and keep rolling. That also leads into my next tip with rovers. And that is to try and get at least six wheels. When you have only four wheels, your chances of getting stuck increase dramatically. So when you actually have all six wheels, if we go over here to the craggy part, what ends up happening is if you only have four wheels, I, I wouldn't have any wheels really to give any forward movement, I guess is the best way to put it. You see that middle wheel is off the ground and it only hits the ground when that rear wheel comes off. If you only have four, you'd be stuck. So just try to have six wheels. You'll make it around these areas a lot better and it'll be a lot easier for you. The other thing when building rovers if you look underneath my cockpit and in between the wheels, I'll even stop here. The wheels sit lower by quite a bit, lower than the rope. The only parts that are about equal height is where they're connected. And that's kind of what we want with rovers. That way you have the clearance to get over those craggy parts, those divots, any bumps that you may go over. Give your rover some height. Don't feel like it's gonna be stubby or short or stand too tall or have too much weight up top. You can always compensate by making it just a little bit wider. A wider stance, a little bit higher frame, you'll be able to make it over pretty much anything. And this will be the last tip for today, but when you go to park your rover, same thing as with flying ships. Never, ever press P. What you want to do is go into your hotbar stuff, your toolbars, find your cockpit that you are using, and do handbrake on off. 
that's going to make it to where the rover won't move. And we'll do the same thing as parking. Never ever press P. Got it? Cool. And that goes for flying ships too. Use the connectors. Use the handbrakes. Don't ever use park. But I hope that helps you guys out. If you know of any more useful tips, tricks that you'd like me to show off, be sure to leave them down in the comments. We'll get them going for you, and let's help these new players out. Give them a little bit of a hand and not let them struggle like we've all had to in the past. <laughs> but I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night, and we'll see you in the next episode. Have a good day, everybody.